you in in your description of ideology and your description of traditionalism, of symbols, of the symbolized, of the logos as transcendent and divine, if I didn't know any better, I would guess that you were a Catholic. You sound an awful lot like a Catholic, and I wanted to know if you had any thoughts about that description, and if you are well, not yet a Catholic... Tell, you know. Oh, well, if you it's aren't yet a tell. Catholic, can I can I be your godfather eventually well, the, when you Well, the do? Orthodox, I've been contacted by a number of Orthodox Jews who think that I'm pretty much an Orthodox <laughs> Jew, and yeah. a lot of Orthodox Christians who think that I'm pretty much an Orthodox Christian, and also a number of Mormons who think, or no, sorry, not, uh, no, who were they? Jehovah's Witnesses. I can't was remember. It? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> it wasn't Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't remember. Scientologists. But I mean, I, it's been funny. It's because I've been contacted by people from a lot of different denominations, and they and they've said the same thing, which is that I'm putting the finger on what they believe is at the core of their belief system. But mm -hmm. you know, and I've been looking at this primarily from a psychological perspective. Like I'm not denying or even commenting on the underlying metaphysical realities. You know. Right technically speaking, because it's out, sort of outside of my domain of competence. I'm not denying their existence or making a case for their existence on, in my public presentations. But one thing I have discovered is that there's something really fundamentally important about the idea of the logos, you know, because the logos is the idea that the individual is the, the soul of the individual and the value of that soul transcends the value of the state. Mm hmm and that's an amazing proposition. I think that's the central Western proposition, is that the state itself has no final dominion over the individual. Certainly right. And we may appeal to heaven, as General Washington once put on a flag. <laughs> so, and the reason that that's so psychologically significant, as far as I'm concerned, is that the state, and this has been realized by a number of cultures in a variety of different ways, the state has a tendency to become too static, mm -hmm. right? And state and static are obviously the same word. And without the dynamic consciousness of the individual continually transforming and expanding the boundaries of the state, the state collapses into a type of totalitarian rigidity and then everyone dies. So <laughs> if you don't keep the state subservient in some sense to the free consciousness that, and and that's the moral consciousness of the dedicated citizen, then everything goes to hell and, and very, very rapidly and, and almost literally. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at places like, you know, Stalinist Soviet Union, and especially in the 1930s, and Mao's China and, and Cambodia and these places where these totalitarian systems got the upper hand, I mean, to describe them as hellish is an understatement, I would say.